Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're here with me today. My name is Carrie Cantrell. I'm the Circles Facilitator, and I want to thank you all for attending our webinar. Our webinar today is called Why My Life is Harder Since My Divorce, During My Divorce, After My Divorce, any of those phases that you might be in right now. I'm so glad you're here to talk about our topic today. Before I get started, I just want to tell you a little bit about myself and some logistics of our webinar. I'm a life coach and a therapist. I run some support groups here at Circles. I have my own practice at Carrie Cantrell Coaching. And what I really do is I help my clients gain emotional wealth, overcome some of the mind drama they have on a regular basis, and amplify their confidence and their self-worth. And I'm so glad I'm here to help you guys today because I feel like these are some of the main things that I help my clients with every day and in my support groups every day because going through relationship difficulties is not an easy task. So if, that, if you're watching this webinar, I think that, that probably means that you're probably having some ups and downs in your relationship or even just feeling those ups and downs of the separation or divorce uh, journey. Um, and don't worry, you're not alone. I think that's pretty common during this part of the journey um, because it's not an easy one. And that's really what we're going to talk about today is what I like to call the emotional roller coaster of the journey. Um, and so we're going to help you um, through this part of the process and talk about some tips and tricks to get through it. Um, but for those of you who don't know about Circles, I'm going to tell you a little bit about us first. We're a leading platform for emotional support and ensure that nobody has to overcome life's challenges alone. Um, it's built on one of the core principles that in order to come life's challenges, you need to be around people who are there to support you. Um, you need to be heard through this part of your journey and not only heard, but you need to be heard by people who truly understand what you're going through. So we partner you with peers who are going through similar experiences so you can be in that warm, supportive environment. Um, and they're going to be matched that are you're going to be matched with people who are going through the exact same things in those support groups. Um, it might be people um, who are going through loss of a loved one, divorce, um, or even people who are experiencing things like narcissistic relationships or stress and anxiety. And each circle is led by a mental health professional. And together with your mental health professional, the members of the group have a safe pa safe place to chat. Um, we meet each week via video and we really support each other from start to finish through the healing process. I hope that I have the experience of meeting one of you uh, in one of my support circles soon. Um, for those of you who are joining us today, we do have a special offer for you guys. And I hope you guys take advantage of it. So everybody who joins Circles gets the first month at Circles free. It's a great opportunity. So go ahead and click on that offer. You can use code NEW2022. Um, I'll go ahead and um, give you that code again at the end if you miss it, um, but I do hope that I get to see you all soon in one of my circles. Um, also, before we officially get started, I just want to mention a few logistical things. So this is a webinar, meaning that there's only one way audio and video. So you can see me and you can hear me, but I can't see or hear you, but I do want to hear from you. So please use the comment box to tell me what you're thinking and feeling as we go through this webinar today. I want to know kind of a little bit about you as we go along and what you're thinking and feeling. You're going to see some reflection sides that give you an opportunity to pause and think about your experience um, as we talk about the difficulties during divorce and separation today. Um, so go ahead and use that comment box. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so today we're going to talk about why my life is harder. Um, I, I like to say during divorce, during the divorce process, because um, it feels like divorce goes on for a really long time. Um, so maybe you're in the process of separation. Maybe you're not officially divorced yet. Um, maybe you've actually officially divorced, but it went really quickly for you. So you're still trying to figure things out. You could be in any of those phases, and this is kind of applicable to you. So I'm so glad that you're here. Um, but I want you to think of it this way. There's going to be a few things that we cover today. Um, uh, you know, 
And I think all of them have a way of kind of resonating with each person here. But tell me what those are. Tell me how it applies to you or maybe it doesn't apply to you so that we can learn from you while you're here. And that's how we learn in our circles. Today, we're going to specifically talk about some common reasons for the emotional roller coaster. And I'll talk about the emotional roller coaster first. But we know that the emotional roller coaster is often the reason that people just feel burnt out during this process. It can sometimes make us just kind of stop growing on a personal level during um, the divorce and separation process. And then I'm also going to make sure that we have some tips to ease things and make life easier. You're in a webinar that talks about why our life is hard. So I want to make sure you leave knowing how to make your life easier. Um, so let's just dive right in. Um, you know, so there's lots of motivating reasons to move forward with divorce. So regardless of you're the person who asked for the divorce or you're the one who, whose partner asked you to um, get divorced, um, we kind of start to create this image in our head of what divorce, life after divorce would look like, right? So you you can start telling me in the chat box what you think your life will look like when you're at the end of this journey, um, what that kind of like light at the end of the tunnel looks like. Maybe some of you imagine yourself spending more time doing the things you love, whether it's being outside, spending time with pets, maybe it's um, spending more time with your kids or friends or family, because that's quality time, things that make you happy and create that joy inside of you. Maybe uh, some of you are like, ah, yes, I'm going to have clean spaces again. Um, or, you know, you get to kind of do a project, something that you kind of lost, a part of yourself that you lost. Um, during your marriage. Um, so whatever that is for you, take some time and tell us what it is in the comment box. I really want to know, what do you imagine that you're going to regain um, as a result of making this life choice to end your marriage? What are you hoping is waiting for you on the other side? I see some great answers coming in. Some people are saying that they're hoping that they're going to be able to spend more time doing things that they enjoy. Um, I, yeah, Joe, so um, rejoining some, you know, like a, it looks like you're saying like a, a sports team or a recreational sports team that you did before your marriage. Um, that definitely sounds like sometimes some time with the buddies. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, Mariana, great. So spending more quality time with your kids and not being stressed out during that time. Those are some great responses. Thanks for sharing. Keep putting those um, comments in the um, comment box. So what we find, though, is that when we start moving through the process of divorce, we realize that things are not quite what we imagine them to be, especially in this middle period, right? So we find ourselves in this middle period often where we're not quite through the divorce process. We haven't reached the other side, or maybe the papers are even signed, but we just don't have all the pieces in place. And so we get, get, get stuck in this area. And I love this picture of this woman because it just kind of feels like you're stuck there and all these things are flying on around you. And, you know, the reality of our current situation has kind of sunk in and it doesn't, it feels, it, it's not what we had hoped for. It feels unsettled. I'm sure there's a lot of different words you guys could put on it. Tell me what it feels like in the chat box. Yeah, Laura, I see you say chaotic. Um, yeah. <laughs> definitely some good words coming in. Um, but one thing I've noticed from people in my circles is that decisions become hard to make, right? So some people find themselves making really impulsive decisions because they find that's easier. It's quick, but it's maybe not the best decision. Other people find that they get kind of uh, paralyzed and they're stuck in this middle zone of not knowing what decision to make so they just find themselves making no decisions um and really it becomes hard to navigate what to do during this time and that might even stall the divorce process right if you are trying to make decisions about who gets what you might ask yourself well am i going to regret this decision later um am i going to regret letting my ex have more then I think they should like, and you kind of get a little angrier. You get that little, you know, uh, 
feeling inside that just makes you angry or frustrated. Um, and so that's the, that's the indecision that I'm talking about because everything is going on around you and it makes it really hard to feel settled. Um, because you're feeling torn in so many different directions and some people feel torn and some people just feel alone. Um, tell me how you feel. Uh, yeah, Laura, I see you saying alone is exactly how you feel. I'm glad that I'm not glad that that word resonated with you, but I'm glad that you found a word that matches how you're feeling. And I mean, at the end of the day, the key here is that your life has changed. I mean, your life is not how it was before. It's not how you imagined it when you got married. And it's not how you imagined it when you said, I'm going to get a divorce. It is none of the above. It's like if you had to pick an answer on a quiz and it's like A, B, C, or D. And you're like, where's option E, F, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, so you're kind of stuck in this middle place. So take a moment, um, you know, take a moment to reflect. Um, what did I think this part of my journey would look like? Acknowledge that. Acknowledge what you thought divorce and separation would look like for you. And ask yourself, what does it look and feel like right now? And actually, what I would even recommend doing is taking a piece of paper folding it in half or drawing a line down the middle and creating two columns. On one side, put down what you thought your journey would look like. And on the other side, put down what it looks like now so you can see the difference between column A and column B. This is a really great exercise just to help bring some acknowledgement and awareness to where you're at now. And sometimes you can even go back and say, okay, what would it take for me to get from column A to column B? And help yourself create an action plan. You don't have to get there yet. You don't have to get there tonight. But just take a moment to reflect. For some of you who like journaling, this is a really great exercise. And for some of you who hate journaling, this is a really great first step. <laughs> so either way, jump on in. Okay, so as I mentioned when we got started, the emotional roller coaster is how we describe in our circles what you're feeling. And know that this thing that we're calling the emotional roller coaster can happen to you at any phase of life. This emotional roller coaster has nothing specifically to do with divorce, separation, heartbreak. But really, anytime we have situations in our life that cause us emotional pain, we might be experiencing an emotional roller coaster where we find our feelings are often changing. We're just going up and down. And oftentimes, it's described as a time period where we just don't know what's going to happen next. But sometimes what happens is that when we're in this period, we can feel emotionally exhausted. We can feel confused. Kind of what I was talking about just a few minutes ago. It can be hard to make logical decisions or even healthy decisions. And we have to recognize if that's the period that we're in. If, that's, if those are the feelings that we're having. Because when we're in that time period, we might need to step back and say, hey, what can I do to help myself? And if we do, we might come out better at the end. We might come out better through the divorce process, making better decisions that are going to serve us um, financially in the divorce settlement, um, better for our, our health, better for the health of our family or our kids. Um, and so just acknowledging that there is something called the emotional roller coaster and that I am riding the emotional roller coaster is a really powerful step. I see some of you resonating with the idea that this is a real thing and that you are riding it. Um, yes, thank you, Barb, for acknowledging that today is a good day on the emotional roller coaster, but yesterday was not. Yes. And one thing that I always like to, to say is, you know, overall, 
if we're on the emotional roller coaster, one thing that we can do is help ourselves by trying to predict the variables. Think about it. When you're on a roller coaster, you can like kind of see ahead and you can kind of see if it's going to go up or down. Sometimes it catches you off guard, but you can kind of see if that loop is coming up and you can kind of brace yourself. You can kind of prepare or, you know, maybe before you even get on the roller coaster, you can kind of look at it and assess like, is that a roller coaster I would want to ride? So that's what we're doing when we predict the variables. It's kind of another metaphor might be uh, prevention, right? You go to the doctor for two reasons. You go to the doctor for a, a blood work check, um, prevention check, get your weight checked and your cholesterol checked. Um, but you also go to the doctor when something's wrong. We don't want to go to the doctor when something's wrong. We don't want to um, only help ourselves when something's wrong. We want to predict the variables and we want to practice prevention. And so that's what we're doing here. And these are just some quick tips. We can be mindful. We can be mindful of what's going on around us. Be mindful of how we're feeling um, and look for patterns. Look for patterns of, you know, what is causing us stress? If um, if I'm constantly feeling stressed after times that I talk to my ex, then, you know, maybe I might change the way I communicate um, to help me predict the variables. I can acknowledge how I'm feeling and the circumstances that are going on around me. When I really acknowledge how I'm feeling, that helps me create acceptance of where I'm at in the journey. And when we sink into our feelings, that acceptance comes easier. A lot of times, one of the mistakes that people make is by avoiding and cutting out and turning off the feelings because it's easier. Well, that sometimes stalls us in the process and moving forward emotionally, like uh, specifically moving forward emotionally. And it can take longer. Sometimes what I see people uh, do is they might turn off the emotions during the process because they're trying to check off the to-do list. Have I called the lawyer? Have I taken care of the kids? Have the kids been fed? Have I moved into a new place? And so they turn off the emotions because they're trying to check off the to-do list. But then that's when the floodgates open and all the emotions come out way later. And so if we acknowledge the feelings and how we're feeling throughout the course of the journey, we find ourselves healing much quicker um, and much more efficiently and much healthier. And when you find that things are off, when you find that you have different feelings going on, when you see the patterns, you can create little action plans along the way. And the last one you see on predicting the variables is making sure that you're practicing self-care. The reason self-care is on here, because the things we do for self-care help us become more flexible throughout the journey. So when I talk about self-care, I'm talking about um, even things like saying yes and no to things you actually like doing throughout the day. But I am also talking about things that we typically think about, like exercise, um, spending time with your friends talking to someone on the phone that makes you happy, um, you know, getting that mani-pedi massage, whatever you enjoy doing, um, it is important because those activities do help us be more flexible. You know, it's kind of like the elasticity in a rubber band. If the rubber band's more flexible, we bounce back. And self-care helps us be able to bounce back a little easier. If the rubber band is really old and hasn't been taken care of, then it's not going to be as elastic, right? And so we need to make sure that we help ourselves by being more and more elastic during this journey so that we are ready for when something happens or comes our way. So take another second and just reflect. Um, you know, how does the emotional roller coaster feel for you so far? I know some of you have already been sharing as I've been talking, but, you know, take a moment and just sit with yourself. Even take a few deep breaths. I'll even breathe with you. How does it feel in your body? Do you feel tense anywhere? Because sometimes it's not all about our emotions. Sometimes it's about how our body feels. 
I love this quote. It says, everything becomes a little different as soon as it's spoken out loud. And it really speaks to that idea that when we acknowledge what's going on, our emotions, how we're feeling, it is becoming something that is there and present. And it becomes almost like that method of prevention that we're not going to let it go any further. We're going to help ourselves understand it better. So just acknowledging where you are at, there's nothing wrong with having up and down emotions. There's nothing wrong with being on the emotional roller coaster, but it's just acknowledging where you're at helps so much more and becomes almost like a skill in your toolbox that you have. Okay. So just like prevention um, and kind of helping ourselves before things happen, making sure we're staying, you know, really flexible in the situations. One of the things that we can do for ourselves is kind of think about the common reasons that I might, I, that I, I might struggle with, right? That I might be thrown off my game during this process. What are things that people deal with that this journey is going to be like, why is this journey going to be hard for me, right? So I'm going to talk about seven common reasons that life feels hard during this process. Um, so let's just dive on in. I think it's super important to recognize that divorce is a huge loss. Um, you are you are grieving. Um, and even if you're the one who wanted the divorce, even if you're the one who went to your partner and said, hey, this isn't working, I'm ready to move on, I'm ready to create something else in my life, um, you've still experienced a loss. Um, think about it this way. You, there's a change in your routine. You don't have the people around that you're, you've been used to. Um, maybe your partner did certain things like, and that's part of the routine, right? They did certain things for you, or maybe they had certain skills that they were really good at that maybe you don't, you don't have. And that part of your life is all going to change and maybe don't realize it now, but I think there's certain points um, in this part of the journey that that light bulb kind of clicks on and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the more and more that your life becomes separate from your ex, that becomes more apparent, um, especially if you're the one who's asked for the divorce, because it, you know, the person who asked for the divorce, it kind of comes on slowly versus the person who is kind of caught off guard by the divorce. It kind of comes on quick. And so either way, both people are experiencing a huge loss. Think of it this way. The life as you knew it is over. So even if you're like, well, I'm glad it's over because now I don't have as much conflict or tension. Um, you know, it's going to be better. You know, there's no more anger or fighting in my daily routine. Our bodies and our minds acclimate over time to whatever we're used to. So even if fighting and anger was part of your daily routine for a few years before you decided to move forward with divorce, you were used to that. Your body and your mind is still going to create a new normal. And it's still going to react as if there's a loss because your life is changing. So just acknowledge, I have a loss. I might be grieving. I might be acclimating to a new normal. I may not be 100% comfortable at first because I have to create this new normal for myself. The second thing that kind of makes our life a little bit harder during this period is that our social life has changed. And, you know, I kind of add um, support system in here, too, because I want you to think about some of the ways that your social life has changed and then think about how those people support you. So oftentimes at the beginning of this process, we hear people say, especially people in our lives, like if, if I was the one going through it, people in my lives might say to me, well, nothing will change. Like, I'm, I'm still here. 
Like, I still got you, especially if they're family of your ex. I think that's really common. Like, nothing will change. We'll still hang out. We'll still see each other. Like, we'll still spend holidays together. Um, but we know things do change. Um, and this can vary from person to person. And your experience might be different than someone else you know who's went through divorce or separation. But we know that friends change. Um, friends might change because they're... Um, impacted by the way you talk about your divorce, or they're not sure what to say to you about your divorce. So friends might separate themselves from you during this time period. We know that um, friendships might change because they feel like they have to choose sides. And maybe some of those friends were closer to your ex. And so your friendship with them has now changed. We, as I mentioned before, family might change um, because Part of your family has probably become your ex's family. And so that family, those family dynamics and relationships might change. Um, we also know that not only the actual people in your life, but the patterns and how you socialize might change. And that might also impact who is around you in your social circle. So think about it this way. If you have children, um, you know, children might be going back and forth between different houses and that creates a schedule that creates a routine of how you socialize as an adult um, because of children and child care and things like that the things you do regularly are adjusted um, and so just keeping in, th in, in mind that as our social life changes our support system changes and we're at a time in our life where we need a lot of support so it's a it's good to think about how we can gather more support. You know, are there um, friends that we haven't talked to in a long time? Are there friends who have been through a divorce who might wouldn't mind, you know, lending an ear or giving us some additional advice? Um, because maybe some of our friends are happily married and they just, they don't get it. Um, are, is there professional support that you can lean on to talk about your divorce so that you can still enjoy fun, happy time with your friends, you know, so kind of also with this thinking about um, your support system and what that would look like from a professional standpoint to help you through your divorce, your social life and your professional support. And that's kind of what we do here at Circles too, is people love coming to our circles around separation and divorce because it gives them that outlet where they can really talk about um, what they're going through, not only the tangible things and the steps they have to go through with accomplishing their divorce um, and their feelings around moving through the divorce process, but they're, they truly feel like they're talking to people who just get it and they can unleash their burdens of the divorce without feeling guilty about it um, versus sometimes in their life, they're not sure what they can and they can't share. Okay, three. Living with the unknown. You know, I think this one can is really kind of broad, but it's also really, um, really important, um, but also can be really specific for maybe you and you can personalize it to you. I think overall the divorce process feels unknown. So maybe you don't know the next steps. You don't know when your divorce is going to be finalized. You don't know who will get what or how things will be split. You don't know when you're going to be able to get your stuff out of the house if you were the one to move out. Um, and so that is a big unknown for people going through this process. And that creates a lot of stress. But also, if you have children, there's a lot of unknowns around that. How will me and my ex communicate? How will we co-parent? Um, when will I get to see my kids again? And, you know, how will me and my ex support each other through the co-parenting process? Or will we even support each other on things to do with our former house, depending on who's living there? You know, these are a lot of things that people commonly ask themselves that create some confusion, frustration, um, and really make life more difficult because of this very long unknown period. Like I said, people going through the divorce process, it can take, I mean, very short periods of time, depending on the state you live in. And it can take really long periods of time, depending on your state. So just knowing that there, there's a lot of unknowns. 
And I even think there's this whole other level of your personal unknowns. I, uh, you know, when am I going to feel better? When am I going to feel more relaxed? When will this new normal feel normal to me, <laughs> right? Um, will I feel settled? When will I feel like I can date again? Will I ever not feel lonely again? Any question that you've been asking yourself probably feels a little unknown. And that kind of falls into this category. I see a lot of you resonating with this section. So thank you so much for sharing in the chat box. Joe, I see you telling us that definitely the housing situation and getting your stuff is a question that you've been asking yourself and it's kind of stressing you out. Laura, thank you so much for sharing about um, communicating with your ex about parenting. I'm so glad that some of these examples are resonating with you all in the chat. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, and this one is really tough too. And, and I mean, this could probably even resonate back to living with the unknown, but I think this is more specific because it's like things that you knew um, and now, it's like you're walking around and um, they're bringing up things that you thought you were going to have at one point, right? So the dreams and memories from your marriage, from your relationship remain with you. So think of it this way. Maybe you thought you were going to retire in another state one day and you were going to travel. Or maybe you just thought you were going to go on that trip next year um, to Hawaii. Um, or maybe you're you work right next to the place that you had your first date and every anniversary date with your ex. These things trigger things within us that create a lot of different feelings, sadness, frustration, anger, um, guilt. Uh, maybe it's something to do with your kids, right? And um, how you thought you were going to have this perfect family unit. Those holidays come up and they trigger things for us about what our life would have looked like. Now, this is a common time for the grief that I was talking about, that loss that you've experienced to arise because you're thinking about what your life would have been like as a married person or those memories that you once had as a married person. And so it's really common to start going through those different phases of grief, asking yourself questions, being angry, being sad. Those are all common phases of the grief process. And, you know, I think another one that is also really common is how, um, how you would have been financially. So maybe even some of the more tangibles. You know, maybe as a married person, you would have had that really nice house and you would have had all your finances in line and you would have been set up for retirement. But now you're struggling. You're like, well, yeah, now I can, you know, maybe in a few years I can get a house again. I'm not sure what I'll do about retirement because that's all gone. Um, and so those are also some of the things that fall into this category, too. Number five, more days feel lonely. I think this can show up also in a lot of different ways, depending on you and your situation. Um, I, some of the things that people in my circles talk about is how their house feels. You know, if you're a family and you're used to, you know, a partner and kids being around, um, the house is going to feel a little more empty. Uh, the kids are going to be at another parent's house. On, mo on every other weekend potentially, or even during the week sometimes. And you're probably used to having a full house 24 seven when you were married. Um, maybe you've never lived alone. Maybe you went from li living with family to being married and you've never lived alone until this point in your life. Or in general, you know, maybe there's been some change in your extended family. So maybe if we think back to those social circles and your support system, so maybe the living situation isn't what's making you feel lonely, but those exterior factors, less friends, 
less extended family, because some of those people have removed themselves or distanced themselves from your life. And that's creating a lonely feeling because there's not as many activities going on. But more days feel lonely is something that we commonly hear from people going through this process. And I think we've kind of touched on this a little bit throughout some of the slides, but the family unit is definitely impacted. And as the parent, um, as one of the people going through the divorce, you are probably taking on a lot of the stress of other people. And if you don't have kids, you're probably taking on a lot of stress of extended family members. So think of it this way. If your mom or your sister is stressing out about your divorce, they're calling you, they're asking you questions about your divorce, you're taking a lot of that on. Maybe your other family members have expectations about what divorce means or what it should look like or who you should tell. You're taking that on too. Um, and if you do have kids, you're trying to worry about them and how they're feeling and how they're thinking and how they're getting through the day and if they're feeling healthy or um, you know, mentally healthy or not. You're taking that on too. So Sometimes what happens is we put ourselves as a back seat when all those things are going on around us because especially women, so for any of you women watching, you know, we tend to take on a lot of the caregiver roles and so we want to make sure everybody else is taken care of before ourselves oftentimes. So remember that while it's important to take care of the family unit, um, but it's like airplane mentality, you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of of everyone else sometimes. So this is a factor that makes divorce harder because of the, the idea that we want to take care of everyone else, but we're not taking care of ourselves enough. Yeah, I, I see some people resonating with that in the chat and the comment box. Mary, thank you for sharing. She notes that um, she's definitely been doing a lot of this, especially with her three kids. Um, and wanting to make sure that they're all taken care of. But what that means is that she has long days um, and is maybe not getting enough sleep for herself. And this one's also kind of open. This is number seven. This is our last common reason for why this period is harder um, in, in your life, why we're making it harder, why maybe an area where we can make it a little easier. And it's because we're overcoming blank. <laughs> I think this feeling is a little different for each of you, but some of the common ones are guilt, shame, fear. You could put loneliness in here too, even though we already talked about that one. Um, for instance, guilt. If you got kids, guilt is probably top of the list, right? Because you're like, ah, I broke up the family. Or maybe guilt if, you know, if your extended family is calling you, doing all sorts of things. Or if you're the one who asked for the divorce, maybe guilt is the top of the list. You're trying to overcome guilt, right? Um, maybe fear is there. If you're like, I don't feel guilty about the divorce, but I am fearing for my future, right? And sometimes these feelings, whether it is guilt, shame, or fear, whatever it is, Know that sometimes these feelings create barriers for us for moving forward. Um, and so this is where that acknowledgement is super duper important, right? So acknowledge what you're feeling. It's okay if it's going to take you a little bit to come up with an action plan of what to do about it, or even if you need to just sit with it for a little bit before you talk to someone. But just acknowledging where you're at and that you have these feelings can be a huge step in the process. You know, write about it if you're not ready to talk about it. And when you're ready to talk about it, we're here for you. Um, but just know that these are normal. A lot of people feel these way, this way. Um, and, and it's okay. Just, just acknowledge it. You got it. So go ahead and take a moment to reflect. I want you to like, look through these seven things that we just went over. Um, what are, how many of them, how many of them are currently impacting you? Um, just do a little tally count and maybe tell us which one is impacting you the most right now. I'd love to know.
Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa says that um, she currently is mostly experiencing the loneliness and then overcoming a variety of emotions. Those two kind of go hand in hand. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing. Yes, Debbie, it's a huge loss. Um, Debbie says that uh, she, uh, her partner asked for the divorce, so she's experiencing the loss feelings right now and going through the grieving process. Thank you for sharing. Thank you all. So, and I, as I promised you, we have, to, like, if we're going to go through all those common reasons, we have to talk about how to make life a little easier. I mean, remember, it's like an emotional roller coaster. So you might feel good one day and the next day might not feel so great. And that's okay. This is all okay. It's good to check in with people, reach out to people, like know who your people are. And it's also good to know like what the things are that you can do for yourself to help you feel better in the moment um, or feel feel better uh, overall, not just in the moment, but what are the things that help you um, make life easier um, when things are just feeling really hard, but it's okay to see the ups and downs. I always tell my groups because they're like, how do I know if this is okay? The way I feel is okay. How do I know? I always tell my groups, my circles, I always tell them that it's okay to have the ups and down days, but does it feel like the ups and downs are getting a little easier, <laughs> right? So like maybe your ups and downs start by going, ooh, 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 right? But then maybe they kind of level out and it's only like this. So they're just not as high and not as low. Um, so that's what the goal is. And maybe some of these tips will help. So the first one is just predict the variables. So I'm kind of repeating what I told you guys earlier. Predict the variables of the emotional roller coaster. Practice prevention with yourself. Try and, you know, really think about what is causing some of it. Be really mindful with yourself. You know, be present. Ask yourself what you're feeling and what's happening around you. And try not to overthink it, too. I always ask yourself, well, what are the facts? Don't, be, don't assume things that are happening. Don't assume what your ex is doing. But ask the facts. Well, you know, he called me. He said X, Y, Z. That's a fact. Um, you know, what he's thinking, what he's feeling are not facts because we don't know. Um, make sure that you're practicing some self-care, like I said earlier. Um, here are some good ideas. Make sure that you have some good space for you, whether it means like scheduling some time in your calendar. Make sure that you have time to yourself to relax. That might mean that you're meditating, journaling, exercising. Um, you can even practice boundaries with all the people in your life by saying yes and no. I always include saying yes because I think it's good to say yes to things that make you nervous or make you a little scared um, because it helps us get out of, out of our brain and try something new sometimes. So practice saying yes, um, but also practice saying no when someone's maybe asking you too many questions or your ex keeps calling because they want to they want to know too many, too many things about either what you're doing or they want you to explain the divorce process to them. You don't have to. So you can also say no. Um, and, you know, make sure you talk to someone. So if you do have a good friend you can talk to, that's great. If you need to find a therapist, that's a good option too. Or if you need to join a circle, those are all good options for self-care ideas. But I also think one of the things that really helps make life easier during this part of the process, um, during divorce, during separation, and even after that, or sent, you know, through um, kind of the uh, rebuilding of your life or, you know, taking the next step after your divorce, is to focus on rebuilding your self-identity. Find things that you like to do. Um, rediscover who you are. Um, and this might look like finding new hobbies. Maybe it's an old hobby that you used to have uh, before you were married that you just haven't done in a long time. Or maybe it's trying something new, uh, but also meeting new people. When we get out there and we try something new or we meet someone new, we learn something about ourselves 
And we also kind of just, uh, we grow a little bit. And so these things can really help us find who we are as an individual, because we've had this identity as a person who's part of a couple for a very long time. Sometimes things like reading a book or taking a class, bringing in some knowledge into our life can also help us do those things. Even listening to music can help us understand our emotions a little bit more. So even going back to some of those earlier steps, like kind of acknowledging where you're at, listening to music is a great uh, option. Uh, during this process of rebuilding your self-identity, it might be good to change your environment. Um, oftentimes through divorce process, people want to stay in their homes because it creates stability. It creates, um, it, it, it allows them the control or the option to maintain the stability and keep the accomplishment that they've worked so hard for. But it also provides a lot of those triggers. You know, it, you know, there's the, the memory of, you know, the, the things that we did in that room as a family, um, or, you know, there was that time we remodeled the kitchen as a couple, you know, so it can be helpful to change the environment. And if you do change, decide to stay in the same living environment that you lived in as a couple, at least change up the space, rearrange the furniture, move things around, maybe switch the rooms around, or even, you know, purchase a new piece of furniture that might be able to add some, uh, new vibrancy to the space. We can help understand our identity a little better by making a list of our priorities. When we know what our priorities are, it helps us rediscover our values, what's important to us, and helps create a direction of where we want to go. You know, so if on our priorities list we say, you know what, um, work and financial freedom is really important to me, then we know that that's what we need to focus on. If we say, you know what, I want to be around caring and kind people, then I might work on building up my social support system and my network of people. And I might say, hey, anybody who's not caring and kind, I don't need to spend time on them right now. Um, so making a list of your priorities can really help you identify who you're going to say yes to and who you're going to say no to. And most importantly, talk to yourself kindly, because if we're self-criticizing or we're not really uh, being friendly with ourselves, it, it, it makes the whole process harder. It makes it harder to practice self-care. It makes it harder to get to know ourselves again and create that new normal part of life. Um, and it, we're really creating this whole phase of life and we're making it much harder on ourselves if we're not talking to ourselves kindly. <laughs> I see some great comments coming in. Yes, thanks so much. Um, Diane says that she's really struggling with talking to herself kindly right now, so she appreciates the reminder. I love it when people just acknowledge that, you know what, I can do that. <laughs> um, also, make yourself a priority. So develop a list of things that you want to do. So, you know, as I was kind of talking about before, one of the reasons why we grieve during this process is because we've experienced a loss. And some of the things that we lose are those future plans, those future ideas, the future trips, the future dreams, the retirement goals, like whatever it was that we planned with our ex. And we can reinvent that. We can make a list of things that we want to do, things that we see for our future. Um, we can focus on financial knowledge and our freedom, right? And I think that going through the divorce process, oftentimes finances is one of the biggest struggles because we're seeing like our finances be analyzed and ripped apart. So focus on what we want those, what you want that to look like, you know, gain, gain a little confidence and cu courage in that part of your life. If, if that's something that you think, um, could be good for making yourself a priority. Create time in your schedule for you, you know, for that self-care. Take a trip. I cannot tell you how many times in my circles around separation and divorce, people are like, I'm going to take a trip. And as soon as they come back from that trip, they feel refreshed. They find a little piece of them. They feel revived and it stays. It's not like the average trip you go on where it lasts like a week and you're like, oh my gosh, now I have so much work to do. 
but they really truly are able to discover a piece of them and help themselves identify what they want their futures to look like. Take a trip, just a, a day trip, a weekend trip, something small. Do it, do it for yourself. You'll love it. And lastly, but probably most importantly, learn to trust yourself. Trusting yourself is a part of this entire process. If you don't trust yourself, this whole phase of your journey is going to feel really hard. And remember back at the beginning when I was like the person with the chaos going around, when you're on that emotional roller coaster, it's going to be really hard to trust yourself because it's hard to make logical and healthy decisions. But if you just start with small things, do I want coffee or water today, right? No, I know what I want. This isn't a hard decision. I trust myself. Repeat that to yourself. I trust myself. And you start building those decisions up and up and up. And you start, you continue to tell yourself, I trust myself. When, you're, when your ex calls and you choose not to answer the phone, you can say, you know what? I trust myself. He can send me a text or an email. When your ex um, sends you an email and you respond, you can say, I trust myself. That was the appropriate answer for her email. Right? So make sure that you're allowing yourself to trust yourself and telling yourself you trust yourself, even if you're not sure yet. Um, that's what I always like to say. Tell yourself, even if you're not sure yet. Actually, you know what? On that note, everybody put in the chat box, I trust myself. Just start now. I, I see some of you doing it already. So start telling yourself now, I trust myself. And I'd love to know from you guys, how will you make life easier during this time? So if there's something that you have in mind or that I didn't say, or if there's something that really resonated with you, Tell me now in the comment box, how will you make life easier, easier during this time? Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I see some people coming in. Bill says that he is going to um, work on connecting more with his friends. Good. Um, Lisa says she's going to schedule in time on her calendar. She likes that idea so that she's not focused on work. Good. Excellent. I really like this quote. I used to hope that you'd bring me flowers and now I plant my own. Uh, I think one of the reasons this quote really resonated with me with this topic is because this topic is all about kind of gaining your own confidence and courage and like recognizing your value as an individual. You know, when we move from being a married person into the separation and divorce process, it's like re-identifying who we are as individuals. And sometimes that comes with a lot of bumps. It comes with a lot of bruises. Um, and it comes with us questioning our value and our self-worth and who we are. But really at the end of the day, it's a process of rebuilding all of those things with inside of us and knowing and being really confident about the fact that I can stand on my own two feet. I can do all these things on my own. I can be a single person and know where I want to live. Um, I can raise my kids as a single parent and know that I'm really confident. I can, you know, uh, do all the thing my, things my partner used to do for me. I can, um, you know, be really confident and trust my own decisions. And so this quote, like, kind of resonates in that way, right? Like, I, I can stand and not just be self-reliant, but I can be truly confident in myself and ask others for help and support when I need it. Um, because that's what true confidence is. Um, and not be avoidant of feelings in a self-reliant way. So I'm here for any questions that you guys might have as we wrap up our webinar today. Oh, I just love this. 
I mean, I love this topic. I love your guys' questions and your comments. I thank you all for participating today. Um, I, I know I've talked a lot about circles today. I really think that if this topic resonated with you guys today, this is the perfect um kind of thing to join a circle for. I know some of you have mentioned in the chat box that like it's really hard to imagine what it would be like to talk to other people about this experience. Um, but just know, because I saw that question a few times, just know that this is the perfect thing to talk to other people about because there's so many different intricacies that go along with the separation and divorce process. There's so many different um, pieces that people will bring up in groups and in circles um, and que uh, different questions that they'll ask each other. And I've never seen someone kind of go like, oh, yeah, we're not going to talk about that because it all resonates with them, whether it's talking about the kids or the ex or how they're feeling that day or being lonely or feeling guilty. Like these, all the things that we talked about today are really things that come up in circles all the time. Well, great. Keep putting your questions in the comment box. We will get back to you afterwards if you have any additional questions. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have for today. Um, I'm so glad that you guys were able to join us. And I just want to take a moment to and thank you all for being here um, and, and, you know, sharing your comments and your thoughts and your questions with us. Um, you know, this is really your first step in your healing journey, um, you know, coming here and, you know, seeking growth as part of your journey, learning and um, kind of trying to... Uh, find those pieces of you that you're trying to figure out in this part of the process. Um, so now that you've taken the first step, just make sure that you consider taking the second step, which is joining the circle. I would be so happy to have any one of you as part of one of my circles. Um, you do get the first month free at circles. Um, the offer is up on your screen. Um, and you'll also get an email after this webinar. Um, with all the information you need to sign up. So first month at Circles is free using the code NEW2022. Um, and uh, you'll have a group of people that you're joining that will 100% resonate with exactly what you're going through. We have groups on all different topics, but especially um, our divorce and our relationship groups are my favorite groups to be a part of. Don't tell anyone else. <laughs> um, but I hope to see you there. Um, and thank you again for joining. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.